بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الحديث حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد يا عباد الله why is it how come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the most important thing in our life this is a question in which I want each and every one of us to answer to himself but I don't want you to answer necessarily with your statements but I want you to look and to see how well your ibadah is reflective of your answer in reality. I want each and every one of us to examine our worship and I want us to see how much our worship reflects the reality of our answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجِعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, How is it that you disbelieve in Allah when you used to be a thing that was dead and then He gave you life and then He will cause you to die and then give you life again and until Him is your return. وَقَالَ إِمَامُ سَعْدِ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى هذا استفهام بمعنى تعجب والتوبيخ والإنكار إمام سعدي رحمه الله تعالى He says that this questioning here this question as it comes in the ayah it comes from the standpoint of astonishment it comes from the standpoint of criticizingly rebuking and from the standpoint of extreme disapproval, of extreme disapproval, Ya Ibadullah, Ya Ahlul Islam, O people of Islam, we who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how come our ibadah is in the state that it's in? How come our ibadah is in the state that it's in and we know that we are returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We know that in front of us lies the death and then the time that we will spend inside of the grave and then we will be resurrected, we will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that after the judgment there will either be the Jannah, the heaven or there will be the Nar, the fire. So why do we act the way that we act? Why is our worship in the state that it's in? Now I don't want anyone to understand from this that I'm saying that each and every individual has to be upon a great amount of worship. I'm not saying that to show true gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
it necessitates that an individual put upon himself that which he cannot handle. We are not saying that. And beware of that. Because this is from the tricks of the shaitan. When the shaitan sees that an individual really wants to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he can't get him to be extremely neglectful, then what he will do is he will get him to go into extremes. He will get him to go into extremes. He will get him to put a burden upon himself from which he cannot bear until he is broken, thus bringing him to extreme neglect where he doesn't do anything. So we're not telling you now to go out and to put upon yourself a burden in which you cannot handle. As the Prophet Wasallam, he explains to us, it is upon us to do what we can. Naam. However, it is upon us to be consistent. Consistent upon that which is good. If we are truly concerned in meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah ta'ala is the most important thing to us, then we have to have that shown and reflected and illustrated inside of our ibadah. So we have to be of those who do what they can in a consistent way. Not those who will pray today and then they won't pray tomorrow, then they'll pray the day after that and then and the like. No. But rather we have to be of those who are consistent upon that which Allah Ta'ala has made obligatory upon us. And then, beyond that, we do from the voluntary deeds that which we have the ability to do. As Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah Ta'ala, he brings a chapter inside of his Sahih, Bab, Babun, Ahabbu Deen ilallah Azza wa Jal, Adwamu. The chapter that the best and most beloved, the most beloved deed to Allah Ta'ala, the most beloved deen to Allah Ta'ala is that which is most consistent. Is that which is most consistent. They come to the side of this chapter, one hadith. One hadith comes to the side of this chapter. At the end of the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, كَانَ أَحَبُّ دِينَ إِلَيْهِ اي إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ the Prophet وسلم, he said that the most beloved deen to Allah Ta'ala and the Prophet وسلم, he used the word deen deen and we know what the word deen means the Prophet وسلم, he said the most beloved deen to Allah Ta'ala is that which the doer of it is consistent upon it he is steady upon it this is the most beloved. We understand from this hadith some tremendous things. And we see the fiqh, or we begin to look and see something from the fiqh of Imam al-Bukhari, and how he named his chapters, and how he brought the hadith inside of his sahih. Because it was not just a collection of hadith that was sahih. It wasn't his intention just to collect the, the hadith that was sahih, فحسب, and that was it. But rather he brought the abawab, he brought the chapters teaching the Muslims their religion. He brought the chapters refuting Ahl al-Bid'ah, refuting the people of innovation, refuting those individuals who had with them Bid'ah, refuting them, and teaching the Muslims that which is correct, teaching the Muslims the Sunnah, teaching the Muslims that which the Prophet ﷺ came with. From that, a beautiful lesson that we learn here, as the ulama they explain, when one examines this hadith, when one looks at the wording of this hadith, he understands and he gets a tremendous benefit from it. Because you see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used the word deen. Ahab al-deen. Kana ahab al-deen. Al-deen. But deen, who al Islam? The deen is al-Islam. Well, Islam, who al Iman? And Islam, it is al-Iman. What dawam al amal and being consistent is about is upon actions. We're going to say that again. He used the word deen. The deen is al-Islam. Al-Islam is al-Iman. Faith. Naam. And Iman, faith, we understand some aspects of faith. What is faith? Ad-Dawamu. Ad-Dawam, being consistent, is upon actions. So we understand from this that what? That actions enter into that which is faith. Actions are from faith. You understand that? 
Because you find many individuals who will say that my faith is in my heart and is strong. But you won't find any actions as if they understand that actions have nothing to do with faith. But we see from this hadith that actions enter into faith. Actions enter into faith. Because the best deen to Allah is that which is most consistent. And we are consistent upon actions. So actions is from faith. Faith is from what? The deen of Al-Islam. Ala kullin. We see from this. Hadha yashiru illa anna al-iman. This points us to the fact that verily iman. Qawlun wa amilun yazidu wa yanqus. That iman is a statement and an action that increases and it decreases. Also we understand from this. Yashiru ila tafdil. It also points us to the fact of tafdil. That there are some who are better than others. Deen wise. Deen wise, there are some who are better than others. There are some who have more taqwa than others. There are some who have more iman than others. Naam. And this is from the standpoint, فَهُنَاكَ mahbub, Because there, there are things that are beloved. A, beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَحَبُّ مِنْهُ and they are that which is more beloved to Allah Ta'ala. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, deen. Huh? Kana ahabbad deen. That really the most beloved deen. So that they deen that beloved and that which is more beloved. So we understand from this that we see that the people of Iman, they are not on one level. We understand from this that the people of Iman, they are not on one level. Because they are that which is loved and that which is more beloved. So therefore we understand that the people of Iman, they are not on one level. But they are those who have more Iman than others. Like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, رضي الله تعالى عنه. There is not a sane person, and we are emphasizing the word sane. There is not a sane person amongst us who will profess, who will claim that he has the same level of Iman as Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, رضي الله تعالى عنه. There's not a sane person from amongst us who will make that claim. Because we know that the Iman of Abu Bakr is on such a high level, it's not like our Iman. The Iman of Abu Bakr, as Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, is not like our Iman. We know this. Naam. The one who entered into Al Islam without hesitation. The one who entered into Al Islam without hesitation. And therein there is a lesson. Because you have individuals who believe because the shaitan has deceived them. The shaitan has deceived them and this is from the ways of the shaitan to deceive us into being complacent. To, to deceive us into being satisfied with what we are upon. To deceive us into having an inflated opinion about ourselves. Individuals who believe that because they were born from a Muslim woman and, and they had a Muslim father. Naam. Because they were born from a Muslim mother and a Muslim father, that their iman is an iman that is higher and is not like the iman of one who accepts the Islam. They believe that because we are born into Al Islam, then by default we're going to be more knowledgeable, we're going to understand better, we're going to have more iman than those who accepted Islam. Naam. So much so that individuals will say, you can't learn Islam from someone who accepted Islam. You have to take your Islam for someone who was born and raised a Muslim. So we reflect upon this statement now. Is this statement a statement that has validity? Is this a statement of a, a statement that is true? Or is this statement erroneous? And I remind you of the fact that Abu Bakr as Siddiq, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he accepted Al Islam. He accepted Al Islam. He was not raised as a Muslim. He accepted Al Islam. But yet his Iman is the Iman that those of us who were born and raised as Muslims, we can't touch it. We can't come near to it. His understanding of, of Al-Islam was an understanding that is so much more superior to our understanding. Likewise is the case of Umar. Likewise is the case of Ali wal Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhum. All of whom accepted Al-Islam and who had an understanding that was superior to our own and who had an Iman that was high. High Iman. The type of Iman of which we can't come close to. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to put us in the akhirah with those whom we love because we should all be loving Abu Bakr, loving Umar, loving Uthman, loving Ali, رضي الله تعالى عنهم. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put us in Jannah near to the ones that we love, to put us in Jannah with the Anbiya Rusul, to put us in Jannah with the Prophets and the Messengers alayhum salatu wa salam, to put us in Jannah with the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to put us by those whom we love because we know. We know that we are not going to be able to be next to them and to be close to them based upon what we have. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put us with them because of our love that we have. Hada aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfiru fa innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Ya ibad, it is incumbent upon us to be consistent with Ta'ala upon the ibad. To be consistent upon the khair. And to not leave off what we used to do from the khair. So if there were certain actions that we left off, be it two raka'at of duha, of salatu duha, or some of the sunan, or some of the yani, uh, the voluntary actions that we used to do, then let us return to them bithnilahi ta'ala. Kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Abdullah ibn, ibn, ibn al-Amr, la takunanna, he said to him, do not be, la takunanna mithla fulan, do not be like so and so, do not be like so and so, كَانَ يَقُومُ لَيْنِ فَتَرَقَ قِيَامُ لَيْنِ He used to stand up at night, then he left off praying at night time. Naam. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling us what? Don't be like such and such. They used to do something from khair, then they left it off. Be consistent upon what you can do. The ulama, they explain that qiyamu layn, the definition of qiyamu layn, is in his salah, بعد صلاة العشاء. Any salah ba'da salat al-isha. Any prayer after the isha prayer. Naam. Any prayer after the isha prayer. So for example, if an individual was traveling, and it's the haq of the traveler that he can combine maghrib and isha, it is for the haq of the traveler that he can combine maghrib and isha. So if he were to combine maghrib and isha, if he walked in Maghrib, at Maghrib time, anything that he prayed after that is Qiyam Ulaim. Even though it's still technically Maghrib time, but for him, because he can combine the Maghrib and Isha, anything he prays after Isha is Qiyam Ulaim. Also, from Qiyam Ulaim, the lowest number of Raka'at for Qiyam Ulaim is one rak'ah. Just witr. If a person stood up and he just prayed witr, one rak'ah, then this will consist, this will constitute qiyam ulayn. And the least of what you have to recite inside of a rak'ah, for the rak'ah to be valid, the least you have to recite from the Qur'an is surah al-fatiha. So if a person stood up and he recited only surah al-fatiha, and he made the adhkar that he had to make inside of the salah and the like. And then he tried to make the taslim. Then this will constitute praying at night time. So now, who from amongst us now is that tired that we can't stand up and pray at night? وَقَالَ Imam فَضِيلَةُ الشَّيْخِ الْعَلَّامَ Shaykh bin Baz رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمِنَ الْإِيمَانِ بِاللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى From Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a must that we remind ourselves of this. Because if we're going to be taken to ibadah, then we have to make sure that ibadah is built upon a tawheed, as we've been saying constantly, and we will continue to say bi'ibnillahi ta'ala. The shaykh says, 
Al-Iman bi anna Allah ilang haq. The belief that Allah, He is the only thing that is worshipped in truth. Mustahiq li-ibadah. He is the one who deserves to be worshipped alone. Duna kulla ma siwa. He is the only one that deserves to be worshipped alone. Not those other than Him, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only He khaliq al-ibad. Because Allah Ta'ala, He is the one who created the slaves. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who al muhsin ilayhim. He is the one who treats the slaves in the most excellent and most beautiful way. Naam. Think about this now. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He created us. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala treats us in the most excellent way. How come Allah Ta'ala is not the most important thing in our lives? Remember, answer this with your ibadah. Not with your words. Wallahu ta'ala will qa'im bi arzaqihim. And Allah ta'ala, He is the one who gives them their provisions. Allah gives to us our provisions, what we eat, what we drink, the air we breathe, clothes on our back, so on and so forth. Allah ta'ala provides for us the provisions. So how come Allah ta'ala is not the most important thing to us? Let us answer with our ibadah. والعالمون الله تعالى هي الزمر who knows بسرهم وعلانية وعلانية تهم هي الزمر who knows their secrets and that which they show وقادر على إثابة المطيعهم and he is the one who will reward those of them who do good those of them who obey he is the one who has the ability to reward those who obey those who are obedient وعقاب عاصيهم and he is the one who will punish the disobedient ones from amongst them. وَلِهَذِهِ الْعِبَادَةِ And for this worship, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الثَّقُلَيْنِ Allah Ta'ala created the thaqulain, the sentient beings from the jinn and the human beings. From the jinn and from the mankind. For this ibadah, Allah Ta'ala, He created us. وَأَمْرَهُمْ بِهَا And Allah Ta'ala, He commanded them with it. Allah commanded us to worship Him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And remind them, because verily the reminder benefits the believer. After this ayah, what did Allah ta'ala say? And remind them, because verily the reminder benefits the believer. After this ayah, Allah ta'ala, He says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn, nor the mankind, except for them to worship me. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ أَنْ يُتْعِمُونَ Allah Ta'ala, لَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُتْعِمُونَ Allah Ta'ala, He says, I do not want from them, I do not need from them any provisions. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ I don't need from them any provisions. وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُتْعِمُونَ And I don't need that they, that they feed me. Allah Ta'ala, He is in no need of anything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَاقِ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ That verily Allah, He is the one who provides. He is the one who provides the owner of tremendous might. Allah Ta'ala, He is the one who provides the owner of tremendous might. So this ibadah is not that which Allah Ta'ala needs. Allah Ta'ala doesn't need anything from us. Allah doesn't need anything from us. This ibadah is what we are in need of. We need to worship Allah Ta'ala. The ibadah that is sincerely for Allah Ta'ala the ramifications or the, or the repercussions that come from it, the fruits and benefits that come from it, the ultimate goal is Al-Jannah. Al-Jannah. If an individual wants to go to Jannah, then he has to make sure his ibadah is ibadah that is good. The ibadah that is good is the ibadah that is built on Tawheed. The ibadah that's in compliance to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those who want Jannah, this is the type of ibadah we need. So when we worship Allah Ta'ala like this, upon this, then we get what? The Jannah. Also, the ibadah is the ibadah that will bring tranquility to the heart. 
the ibadah that will bring tranquility to the heart, the ibadah that will help an individual when he's going through tough times, through rough times, through trials and tribulations of which we're going to go through in this life. <coughs> we're going to go through trials and tribulations in this life. The ibadah will help us to cope. The ibadah will help us to keep our head above water. The ibadah will help us from being overwhelmed. The ibadah will help us to keep our sanity. The ibadah will help us through our tough times. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And seek aid. We're going through a hard time. And seek aid in patience and prayer. Seek aid in patience and prayer. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us of those who have the beautiful patience. وَكَمَ قَالَ الْعُلَمَاء أَصَّبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ أَصَّبْرٌ لَيْسَ فِيهِ شَكْوَةٌ The ulama, they say that the beautiful patience is a patience that doesn't have in it any complaining. A patience that doesn't have in it any complaining. Does this mean you don't have the ability to complain? No, you can complain. You have much you can complain about. But it is the patience of which you won't find the abd complaining to any of the other ibad about his situation. But rather he will take his complaints to Allah. Allah Ta'ala should be the most important thing in our lives. So therefore, we should take our complaints to Allah Jalla wa'ala. We need this ibadah. This is an ibadah that Allah Ta'ala created us for. An ibadah that only belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As Allah Ta'ala, He says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those who came before you so that you will attain piety. You want to attain taqwa? Verily Jannah is for those who have taqwa. Naam. So we need the taqwa. And what would get us to the taqwa? The ibadah. Worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how is your ibadah? How is our ibadah? This is what I want us to ask ourselves now. How's your ibadah? Ala kullin, Allah Ta'ala, He goes on and He says, الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشَ وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءَ وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah Ta'ala, He says, What means? He is the one who has made the earth for you like a bed. He has made the sky like a canopy. He has sent down from the sky water and brought forth from it vegetation as provisions for you. Vegetations and fruit as provisions for you. So do not associate partners with Allah and you know. Do not associate partners with Allah and you know. So our ibadah has to be upon a tawheed. We have to be doing those things in which Allah Ta'ala had obligated upon us and we have to also be doing what we can from those voluntary actions of worship all of which we do sincerely for Allah Ta'ala in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So again ya ibad, how is your ibad? Again ya, again ya ibad Is Allah the most important thing in our lives? Let us answer with our ibadah, not with our words. Hada aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfu Allah li wa lakum fastaghfiru. Nasa Allah ta'ala an yuwafiqni wa iyaakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yarda wa an yaj'alna min al-ladhina yastami'una qawlan fayatabi'una ahsana wa an yaj'alna mubarakan haythu ma kunna wa an yaj'alna min man idha u'tiya shakar wa idhu butuli ya sabar wa idha adhnaba astaghfara فإن هؤلاء ثلاثة عنوان السعادة هذا فأقيموا الصلاة